Hi everyone, my name is Maida Devare. I'm a senior research fellow at the International Food Policy and Research Institute, or IFPRI. Um, I also lead uh, one of the modules of the Big Data Platform, CGIR's Big Data Platform, which you'll hear more about, a little bit more about now. Um, and I am the, um, the architect, you can say, for uh, the Guardian tool, which is what we're trying to give you an overview of uh, in this session. So let's go and see what that looks like. Okay, so what we're trying to do with this video is to give you an overview of uh, uh, Guardian. And what Guardian is, um, it is a, a, a data discovery tool. It's actually for data and publication, so data assets or data writ large. Um, and it searches across all of CGIR's 15 center repositories. So that means about 30 plus repositories um, and enables the discovery of data and publications wherever they sit. So you don't need to know where they are. You can find them through Guardian and do things with them. I'll talk a little bit more about that in my presentation. You'll also hear a little bit about what FAIR data is and why it's important. So with that, um, let's launch into it. So let's start with what we're trying to do here. What, what is the issue? We're trying to deal with a, a constantly increasing population. We expect 9 billion people on Earth by 2050. How are we going to feed them all? Well, we believe that improving access to technologies, particularly uh, technologies like big data machine learning, uh, being able to leverage those technologies, digitizing in the agricultural sector, uh, can catalyze sustainable agricultural systems and can help us feed those people better. So what I'm talking about is the agricultural sector needing to get smart, needing to get digital. Right. Um, digitizing anything means large amounts of data. And we already have vast amounts of data being produced, even in the agricultural world. Um, how do we ensure that that data is being used effectively and smartly? So here's where the CGI, CGIR Big Data Platform for Agriculture comes in. What we're trying to do is harness uh, technologies like big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence uh, to enhance our uh, ability to innovate and our impact. What we want to do is turn data into insight, ultimately. And this is what the platform is trying to do. How do we do it? We're organized around three modules or pillars. Um, and so let me tell you a little bit about each of these. The, the module that I lead is called Organize, and as the name implies, what we're trying to do is organize data, so, so focusing on FAIR and open data. FAIR refers to findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data. You'll hear a little bit more about that as we go on, but for now, just remember that. What we're also trying to do through Organize is to tr strengthen um, the the uh, not only the ability to find the data, but then to do something with it. So we're we're strengthening analytical pipelines as well as capacity around data science, data analytics. The big part of what we're trying to do with organizers is also change culture. Um, that's sometimes harder than the technical problems or the technical issues. Um, so those two things, the, 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 the technical pieces, uh, the tools and approaches, and the, the uh, culture march sort of hand in hand. The idea is to make it easier to generate data that's rendered fair at the collection point. So we have um, uh, another big project uh, trying to develop an agronomy fieldbook system that uses standards to generate data that's already fair. Um, we're also developing some tools uh, to enable historical data or data that was collected you know, a few years ago to be annotated well to render it fair. So that's organized in a nutshell. The second module or pillar is called Convene. And as the name implies, what we're trying to do here is build uh, novel partnerships, uh, play to everybody's strengths uh, in order to, to uh, develop new tools, new approaches, and enable shared learning. The Inspire module 
is sort of the blue sky thinking. So, so what can we do with the data that's now rendered discoverable? What, how do we work together through the convene uh, uh, partnerships that are generated to develop tools or innovations that will allow us to enhance our impact and to enhance the impact of international agricultural research, really? So those are the three modules of the big data plot platform. I'm going to focus on organize. So I mentioned FAIR data. And I said that FAIR stood for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data. Uh, why are we talking about FAIR rather than open data? Well, the, the conversation around this has changed a little bit uh, because with open, I mean, you could, you could put a PDF of data sets up into a repository um, and say that now your data is open. And this could be just a summary data table, for instance. But the question is, what can you really do with that data? Can you do anything with, with, with the PDF of a, of a summary data table? The answer is no. For that uh, data to really power innovation, for that data to, to be able to aggregate with other interesting data sets or relevant data sets, you need that data to be fair. What do we mean when we say that? Well, for something to be findable, for, for either a publication or, or a data set to be findable, um, it needs to have a persistent identifier like a DOI or a handle. It needs to have rich metadata and good documentation. For something to be accessible, it needs to, to have um, a clear usage license and, and ideally as unrestricted um, usage as possible. Um, it needs to provide access to both the metadata as well as the physical file of that data asset. For something to be interoperable, it needs to have industry standards for metadata and, and, and data. And what that means is, is using controlled vocabularies, um, semantic standards. We'll get a little bit into that as I do the Guardian demo. But just know that there are standards for metadata and data. And for something to be interoperable, we need to be speaking the same language across those resources. That's where these standards come in. What they enable is the ability to interpret the data and to aggregate the data. And the interpretation aspect is important, not just from a humanized point of view. So for me to be able to interpret, interpret the data as a human being, but also for machines to be able to understand what that data is about. So the machine learning that, that I mentioned uh, earlier wouldn't be possible without this aspect. So that's important. The reusable aspect of FAIR um, is basically a composite of the other dimensions. So for something to be reusable, it must be findable, it must be accessible, it must be interoperable. So that's what these uh, indicators are telling you. Um, it's it's important here because uh, being able to describe data well, being able to make data fair, uh, will mean that you perhaps uh, uh, have some cost savings. It makes it easier to find data. It makes it easier to aggregate data, to, to do something useful with that data without spending a lot of time on it. Uh, it means that data sets or the collection of data uh, will, will likely not be duplicated as much. Uh, it also means that you're going to be adhering to increasing requests from funders to make data open and fair, to make it reusable, essentially, to, to be able to innovate with data. Um, so, so, so there are many, uh, many positives to, to, enable, to making data fair. OK, um, moving on. I want to move now to what you can actually do with FAIR data. So here's where Guardian comes in. Um, I've included the URL for Guardian, so you can go there and, and uh, test it out for yourself. It's guardian.bigdata.cgir.org. What can you do with Guardian? So let's um, let's do a search. Um, you can you can put a search in the in the search box of Guardian. So let me move to. Oops. Let me move now to Guardian, and do a search for something like rice and gender. I'm interested in looking at. Um, some, some uh, gender-related aspect of rice production, perhaps. So I do this kind of search. Um, before I move on, you see that you, you can, you, right now, Guardian is, is indexing about 
just under 100,000 publications and about uh, 3,000 plus data sets from across CGIR's 30 odd repositories. Very shortly, we will be indexing uh, more repositories beyond CGIR. So we're already doing that uh, um, and, and it'll that, that functionality will be ported over to the, the production site that you're looking at very, very shortly. Right, so I've done the search, I've put in these keywords for rice and gender, and what I now see when I go to Guardian is that I'm getting about 16, over 1600 um, hits in CGI repositories for publications using these keywords and about 21 data sets on this. So let, let's just look at a data set. Um, when I go to either the publications or the data sets uh, um, tabs, what you see is filters. I can filter by year in this case. So maybe I want to look at uh, say 2016 data. Well, in this case, there's one data set from 2016. Um, let's go back to all. Uh, I can filter by a particular center or institution once we move beyond the CGIR centers, I can look in different fields and I can filter by country using this map. Um, I can go quickly to a data set. So let's just look at the top one here. This is from a SEAT repository. SEAT is one of our 15 centers. Uh, at the top part of the, of the um, search of the, of the data set here, the first thing you see is a license field. And this increasingly, we're encouraging people to use machine readable licenses. Um, and to the extent possible, we're stirring people to use the Creative Commons or CC licenses. So here's the CC license. It tells you that it's the least restrictive license in this case. Um, you can also view, by clicking view, you can get some more information on the terms of use for this resource. And you can get the resource itself by clicking on the persistent identifier, uh, the digital object identifier or DOI here. Um, and that takes you directly to the CIOUT repository and you can get the data set from there if you wish. You, you can see here a little bit on the citation, there are the authors. Uh, by clicking in on any one of the authors, you can see what else they've published in Guardian. Going further down, you can see the geographic scope of this. So there's, um, you know, the, the, the country here is highlighted that this description refers to, that this work was done in. If there's no country, then there, nothing will be highlighted here, of course. There's a summary. Ideally, um, your data set, as I mentioned, for it to be findable and, and increasingly accessible, you would include rich metadata, rich descriptions, rich documentation of that data set. So here's where the summary comes in. This is a nice summary. And you go further down, um, you can see something called fair compliance. So here you can look at how fair is this data set. Um, to understand a little bit about how this is computed, what these indicators are actually doing, you can click on view metrics. So let me open that uh, of the fair data metrics here in a new tab. You can also get at this from the about of Guardian. But um, what you see when you go to fair data metrics is a little bit on how fi the findable, accessible, et cetera, is calculated. And you can also download uh, the Guardian guide for fair data, and that's a PDF. So if, just to give you an example, if I, if I want to know how we measure findability, when I click on that, I see a very detailed guide that enables you to improve your score for that F, for the F in fair. So it's this real blow by blow guide to enhancing uh, your findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability here. Let's go back. To the, to the data set that we'd found. And I can look at these keywords. These are coming from controlled vocabularies and ontologies, the standards that I mentioned to render data assets interoperable. By clicking on any one of these, I'm essentially doing a, a search in Guardian for, for based on any one of these keywords. If I go further down, I see that in fact, for this particular resource, I can access the data sets directly. Uh, the reason for that is that they're governed by the least restrictive licenses. And so we're trying to get to a functionality where you can enable batch downloads of data sets. This is the first step towards doing that, towards enabling that batch download. Um, the, at the very bottom, what you see is something called relevant publications. Because we're at a data set, it's showing you relevant publications. If you were at a publication, you would see relevant data sets. What enables this is algorithms running in the background of Guardian to 
use the rich metadata enrichment uh, that Guardian does by, do, you know, through data mining techniques, through through text mining techniques, and um, the, the algorithms actually allow you to find other data assets in Guardian that are relevant to this one. So this is this is the whole um, page the, the, of, of, for this data set. This is the world for this data set um, in Guardian. Again, just to reinforce, Guardian is not actually holding the data set. In order to get to the data set, you have to go to the to the repository, typically through this link, um, or for the most for the least restrictive license through the clicks down below at the data set file level. All that Guardian is doing is harvesting the metadata, enriching that metadata, and making the, the, the resource discoverable wherever it sits. Right now, this is extending only to CGIR repositories. Very shortly, you will see data assets coming in and playing um, in the wider CGIR, uh, with the wider CGIR assets, um, but they will be coming from other repositories that are not CGIR repositories. Right, so now let's move to data exploration. What can you do when you have well-described data? Here you see two uh, tabs. One is crop production statistics from 2005. Very shortly, we will have crop production statistics from uh, a very large uh, compiled data set, global data set from 2010 and 2015 as well. So look out for that. Let me go to Genesis and quickly find um, rice. So rice is here and you see that you can, you can visualize the 200,000 odd accessions, almost uh, 214,000 odd accessions uh, that sit in gene banks across the world. So this is coming from uh, the gene banks platform and the Genesis database that they maintain. Um, and each dot here, let me blow up this, each dot here is uh, a one accession essentially from, that, from, the, from a gene bank. Um, I can also go to the production statistics and look at rice since that's a search that we did just now. Um, and I want to know the irrigated yield as well as the rain fed yield globally. So now what it's going to do is drop the data on this map. And I'm already beginning to see uh, the irrigated yield. It's now working on bringing in the rain fed yield. And so the, the irrigated yield here is in blue. Sorry, the irrigated, yes, the irrigated yield is in the blues and the blacks, the dark colors, and the rain fed yields are in the lighter colors here. So let's zoom in a little bit more. And um, say I want to, well, let's zoom back out a little bit. Say I want to look at uh, the statistics for a country. I can take this pin and drop it here. And what I see is uh, the summary statistics in this case for Nepal. So I've zoomed in. Um, this is the country of Nepal. I can, by removing the, the, the bar here, I can see which country I'm at. Um, in this case, I know this is Nepal. And I see that the mean rice yield for Nepal in 2005 uh, was about uh, just under four tons per hectare. Right, so that's really interesting. I see that there are some areas of very high um, uh, irrigated yield, in fact. This looks like it's along the Indus um, uh, uh, River. So I wanna zoom in and see, okay, what, what is the, the, the irrigated yield there? I can click on this draw a polygon functionality and I can zoom in and look at a particular yield by just clicking my mouse and delineating a particular part of the um, of the of that map, and when I oops, when I end up at any one of, at, at where I started, what I see is um, an assessment of what that yield looks like. Here it tells me the mean yield, in fact, is about just under three tons per hectare. So that's kind of interesting. And now when I zoom out again, 
I can have a bird's eye view of, of the entire um, global production or the statistics for 2005. All right, um, that was for georeference data. So that what, what this is premised on is good documentation, well-documented well documented data um, that's, um, well, that has good annotations, uh, that has, that's clearly georeferenced because without georeferencing, we couldn't do this. This is why it's really important to document your data well at collection itself. Let's go over here to semantically enabled data. This is the last thing I want to show you on Guardian. And what this allows you to do is to, to um, have a look at what you can do with data that's that's really well described, that's, that's um, interoperable, really. So you're using semantic standards here. You're using controlled vocabularies. You're using ontologies to annotate your data set itself. Um, let's look at yields of unimproved, let's let's say it's not maize, say we're interested in sorghum. So I go to sorghum and I'm looking at um, sorghum in Africa. So I'm going to click on Mali here that I'm interested in, Ghana. Uh, I want the data sets for all three countries. In this case, they only exist for these three countries uh, from Guardian. Um, and I can click on go and let's see what, what Guardian does for us. So what we're trying to enable here is a, a, a searching off all of the data in Guardian and an ability to integrate that data, to aggregate that data without you going through weeks and weeks of, of uh, data cleaning, processing, writing to the data owner to say, OK, you know, your column heading is, is A13. Um, uh, what does that refer to? I don't understand it because the annotations are missing. So if you have well annotated data, this is what you can do with it. You can query a pool of data, which is what Guardian holds, a pool of data. You're querying the semantically enabled data here, and you're able to aggregate it very, very quickly and easily. And what this is doing is um, finding data from across well, three data sets really, and aggregating that data for you. So if I look here on the first uh, page, I'm seeing data from Mali. If I look at the last page, it's from Tanzania. And if I look at something in between, um, there you see, you see Ghana and Tanzania there. So what it's done is found three data sets, these three data sets here uh, that are all uh, survey data. And it's taken the data, it's taken the yield data and aggregated it for you so that you can have a look, um, a quick look, and then do whatever you want with the data. You can get the data. You can download the data here um, and the aggregated data and run analytics on it if you wish. So that's the power of being able to, of having data that's, that's uh, really well described and well aggregated. Let's go back to our, um, our, our slideshow here. And I will go to where I stopped. I just want to leave you with. I want to leave you with a um, just a, a sort of a final couple of slides. Um, this one, again, sort of refers to what you can do with with data that's that's fair. Um, so so here we're trying to leverage Guardian's fair data, and I'm providing a quick example of what you can do with that. So. The question here is, can I develop, evaluate, and recommend sustainable intensification practices in West Africa? Well, yes, you would go to Guardian. You would do a search um, that, that will allow you to find data sets. Um, and here, the search terms may be West Africa uh, crops um, and maybe something like in-season growth or, or crop growth or crop production. You would then retrieve the data sets that you found. And uh, we're working with the, the AGMAP project, which is the Agricultural Model Intercomparison and Improvement Project based at the University of Florida, where we have another project uh, through the University of California, Davis, uh, to do a similar kind of um, uh, data proposition or value proposition for data products. Um, but with this particular value proposition, what you would do is go to Guardian, put in your search terms, find the data, and then we're building the analytical pipelines that allow you to take that data, put it directly into, plug it into uh, uh, some key models, and get an output that allows you 
to 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 make this kind of determination of uh, what sustainable inter intensification practices might be for West Africa. So that, in a nutshell, is the power of Guardian, the ability to discover the data, to be able to analyze it, um, to be able to visualize the data in, in, in terms of the, the sort of mapping capability that I showed you, um, and to do interesting, to mine the data pool that's in Guardian. So there's a huge pool of data. Um, you can query it, you can mine the data, and you can aggregate it easily if it is interoperable. So here's where the value of FAIR data is quite evident, I hope. Um, we also, through Guardian, have uh, um, uh, some tools that are in development that will allow you to quickly add metadata uh, to, your, to your data asset, that will allow you to annotate data sets uh, with, with uh, ontologies and controlled vocabularies without really needing to understand a whole lot about what an ontology really is or does. Um, and, and we have other tools like the one I mentioned of, uh, on field books, to trying to standardize data at the collection point uh, through an agronomy field book system. So that's sort of the, the entire environment of Guardian. Thank you for listening and for looking at this video. I want to end um, to, to, by letting you know that if you have questions, uh, feel free to contact me, Meida, and my email is right there, m.davare at cgir.org. Thanks very much.